Hey guys, welcome to Coding and Flow. This little video series will be an introduction into the topic of offline caching on Android. We will build a little app that fetches data from a REST API and displays this data in a recycler view. In this case, it's a list of fake restaurants. But instead of just fetching this data from the web every time we open the app, we will also cache this data offline by saving it into an SQLite database. This means that when the user opens this app for a second time, we will see the cache data immediately instead of the progress bar. So the user doesn't have to wait until he sees something on the screen. And then the app will still go ahead and fetch the new data from the REST API in the background. And then when it's done, it updates this data on the screen, which we could see as a little flash effect after a few seconds. So this is the cache data, then we see a little flash, and then we see the newer updated data. Now this API basically gives us a completely new data set whenever we make a GET request on it. So the changes to the old list are quite drastic, but in a real app with a real REST API, the changes might be smaller. So only a few descriptions could change, for example, or you could have some new items added to the top as compared to your cache data. And then the recycler view will just dispatch the appropriate update animations. And caching this data offline doesn't just mean that the app will respond faster when the user opens it. It also, of course, means that it works offline. So when we close the app and put the device into airplane mode and then open it again, we don't see an error or an empty screen. We see our cache data instead. And this is very important for user experience because you have to remember not everyone has a good internet connection and not everyone is connected to Wi-Fi at the moment. So uh, this is not only important if there is no internet connection at all, it's also important when uh, internet connection is slow or flaky. This course is meant as an introduction into the topic of offline caching. It will teach you the basic concepts and you will be able to uh, start implementing caching into your own apps. But I've also just recently released a more advanced caching course where we basically learn the same stuff as here, but with additional features, with a more sophisticated caching strategy. We learn more about the overall app architecture, best practices, and I've prepared some really nice illustrations that help understand these difficult concepts. And we also learn how to uh, use the Paging3 library with offline caching, which is a very important topic because you often need pagination in your apps. And the course is paid, but it's totally worth it. If you want to take a look at it, you can go to the URL codingandflow.com slash caching. I will also put this link into the description box under the video. And if you want to take a look at the source code of this project first, which is public, so everyone can take a look at it. I will also put a link to that GitHub repository into the description box. So definitely take a look at it if you want to learn more about caching. And now enjoy this video series here on YouTube. To handle caching, we will use something called network bound resource, which is a helper class or a function that coordinates between the database and the REST API and decides when it's time to just show the cache data and when it's time to fetch new data from the web and update the cache. This network bound resource is described in Google's official guide to app architecture, which is basically just a website that describes how to build a modern, well-architectured Android app. You can find this guide under this URL, developer.android.com slash jetpack slash guide. And what they describe here is basically an MVVM architecture, which basically looks like this. Now this video series has prerequisites. Before you watch this, you should watch two other video series of mine, which are also free here on YouTube. One is the MVVM to-do list app, where we built a simple offline to-do list without a remote data source. You can find a link to it in the info card in the top right corner of this video. There should be a little eye. You can click on it and then the, you can see the info card with the link. And the other one is the MVVM image search app course, which is basically the other side of this architecture. There we don't have an offline database, there we only use a remote data source to load data from the web, but we don't cache it there. Caching is what we learn here. So watch these other two first and then come back here if you haven't yet. 
The reason why you should watch these other two first is because there are certain things that I don't want to explain again here. I won't again explain what a view model is or how live data works. We will also use Dagger Hilt for dependency injection here, which I also don't want to explain again. And I also won't explain again how retrofit works. I assume that you already know this. Of course, if you already know about Dagger Hilt and you already know what view model is and so on, then you can skip these other two. If not, if anything about this confuses you, go ahead and watch them first. However, if you want the whole package, in the paid course I mentioned earlier, which you can find in the description box below, I actually do explain everything again. So if you don't want to watch a couple different free courses, then you can go ahead and take the paid course and it will explain everything from the start, basically. And the difference between this video series and the other two is that here we will use both. We will use a database for offline caching and we will also use retrofit to make a network request to a REST API. And the repository is the class that's responsible for coordinating these two, for mediating between them. In other words, this is where we will use our network bound resource because the network bound resource contains the actual logic that knows how to do this, how to coordinate between these two. And when we scroll down a bit further, we can see an actual implementation of this network bound resource here at this link. This class is not contained in any official libraries. This is basically just something you can copy paste into your project. But as you can see here, this network bound resource actually looks very complicated. This is why we won't use this one. This is basically an old version. Now that we have Kotlin Flow, which is a relatively newer Kotlin language feature, we can create the same logic, but in a more simple way with much, much less code. And we will actually be able to write this ourselves line by line and understand what is actually happening. So if this scares you, don't worry, the network bound resource rewrite will be much simpler and you will see that it will actually be quite easy to understand. Before we can start, you have to download the starting project for this course, because I've already prepared some dependencies that we will need. You can find the starting code under this URL github.com slash coding and flow slash simple caching example. Of course, the link will be in the description box as well. If you don't know how to import this project into Android Studio, this is explained in my other two previous courses, so watch that first. And as usual, you have to uh, check out the master or part one branch to get the starting code for this project. In the starting code, as I already mentioned, there are some dependencies that we will need. So we will use retrofit and JSON to load the data from the REST API and we will cache it in room. So we have these dependencies. We will use live data to uh, get this data to the UI layer. As I already mentioned, Hilt for dependency injection and Clyde is responsible for loading the images. And we will use coroutines for these asynchronous operations. Again, this is explained in the previous two courses. The rest is just some general setup that we have to do. We don't have to know about this in detail, but if you want to know more about this, all these steps are usually explained in the documentation of a particular library. So you don't have to know this out of your head. You just have to read the documentation. And of course, we also use view binding. And in the other build .gradle file, also just some general setup, basically just this line here, which enables Hilt. And that's it. When you load this starting project, we are ready to go. This will be a relatively short course. It will probably take around one hour total, but it will be totally worth it. So watch it till the end. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And then we see us in the next part where we do some preparations. Take care.